pleasure to, uh, uh, to be here. It's also good to see that not all people already escaped for the, for the football match. Uh, but we will be finish, we will finish in time, so don't, uh, don't worry. Uh, so as Anna indicated, I would like to relate process mining to, uh, uh, to the development related to, to data science. So today we have a very cozy camp. We are talking about uh, uh, process mining. I think Anna and Christian are doing a great job in, uh, in bringing all the people here and making advertisements for the topic. <laughs> I think it's really great. Uh, so if I, I will talk more about the data, data science perspective, but if I listen to the talks today, there are, uh, are two things that I would like to share uh, with you. Uh, my first feeling is that uh, if we look at the, the, the stage of maturity of process mining, that still many of the applications that uh, we are looking at today are explorative, as Anne uh, talked about it. And indeed, that is extremely uh, powerful. It's powerful of process mining that you can do it without really knowing the process that you're after. But if you get a bit more mature and you want to predict things and you want to check compliance, then there are also more advanced, uh, let's say, process mining techniques that you can uh, you can use. And I'm sure that, that in later camps, kind of these things will, issue, uh, will come above. I think many of the questions of things that were told today that process cannot do, I think actually it can do. Uh, it's just that, that it is not visible enough that it can be. That is one observation. Another observation, and I will talk about that uh, in a minute, is that typical the, the event data that one looks at are very much of an administrative nature, which is very logical because that's the data that is there. When we started doing this 15 years ago, our data were yellow notes, people writing on yellow notes, and that was our input data. You cannot imagine that now, that we were doing that, but that was what we are doing. Today, if I look, listen at the talks, the data is very much at the administrative level, let's say SAP-like data. But I expect also in the next 10 years, this will change dramatically. The types of data that we will use will be, will be very different. Uh, and that relates a bit to the things that I'm going to talk about. Uh, so the direct reason why I'm talking here about data science is that uh, on the 2nd of December last year, we opened the Data Science Center Eindhoven. Uh, this is a data science uh, center that uh, focuses on uh, research, focuses on teaching, focuses on collaboration with industry, all in the area of data science, because we see that this will be as important as the, uh, the way that uh, computer science emerged in the early 80s. It's becoming a separate discipline. Uh, we will educate new people that, that have these skills. And that's kind of the flavor that I would like to give. There is a huge interest from industry for this topic, so uh, uh, we organized it, 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 this opening. Uh, uh, we had a website, I think, opened for, for two weeks. We had 700 registrations and we had to close it. Okay. These are not academics that you see here in the room. These are all people from industry that, that see that this topic is, uh, uh, is very important. Also, kind of the, uh, each year more and more people want to come to this uh, day here, and that is kind of uh, showing the same uh, trend. So, data is the new oil. Uh, uh, and yeah, you, you've heard man, many of these things, but for me, still, the, 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 the quote that says is all is that in the last 10 minutes we have generated more data than from prehistoric times to 2003. That, that, that still is the flavor. Uh, that I think is very important. And I think for process mining, having this type of view on data is very important. And that we think not of what we have now, and the processes that we have now, and the applications that we have now, but that we think uh, beyond this. So there is the, what I call the internet of events, uh, which for me cons consists of four typical types of event data. One type of event data is very much related to content. So that is on Wikipedia, uh, things that, that you access through Google, the, the classical uh, type of information, uh, and, and it's getting bigger and bigger. The, the second type is the Internet of People. 
It's about uh, things like social media, Twitter data, and Facebook data. And, and already many people are mining today these types of information sources. What I think will change everything in the next 10 years is the Internet of Things. And you all heard about this, but your shaving device in 10 years will be connected to the Internet. Your TV, your, uh, your refrigerator, everything. And we are talking with Philips about bite rings, as if a child develops teeth, that you will have a bite ring connected to the internet warning the parents that the children is getting teeth. Or a drink bottle that will kind of monitor the temperature of the, of, of the liquid that is in the drink bottle, etc. Et and so this, this is the kind of event data that will be generated in the, in the future. And there is also, of course, the internet that is in your pocket, uh, your mobile <coughs> devices, all generating lots of data. We have all heard these stories, but this is driving, uh, this is leading to a new profession. It was not there, it's accelerating, and we, we require a new type of people, a new type of engineers to deal with all of this. So if you talk about the four Vs of big data, <laughs> volume and velocity are obvious. We get more data, it's getting faster there. Uh, what is also important, and you could see that in some of the talks already, uh, there is variety and veracity. So variety refers to the fact that we need to combine data from different sources, linking structured to unstructured data, combining text mining with process mining and all of these types of things. Veracity is related to the uncertainty of data. So imagine that you have the, you, you think about a customer journey and you think about somebody buying a shaving device. As for somebody buys a shaving device, and then later this person has all these interactions with this company. Uh, for example, you require a special type of, of liquid or cream. Uh, the device may break down, it needs to be repaired. People may complain on the internet about the device that they have uh, uh, bought. All kinds of new services will start to emerge. But how do you know, as a, from the resisting? from the resistance of when you're shaving, already Philips knows now if you return the shaving device what kind of skin you have. Yeah, because it's already logging internally in the engine uh, how the device has been used. So, uh, uh, veracity refers to the fact that somebody has bought that shaving device but perhaps now the son is using it, or the neighbor. And so how do we correlate all these different things together? That's an incredibly difficult challenge, which will emerge more once these events are, let's say, omnipresent. And so, many people talk about big data. I, I think it's a horrible term. I think it's the same as talking about big computers or something like that. It sounds a bit foolish. <coughs> I think even if data sets are much smaller, there is still a, a huge complexity in analyzing them both from an algorithmic point of view as from the viewpoint of, uh, of having the skills to actually analyze and interpret the data. So here you see uh, some definitions of data science. I'm not going to elaborate about it, but it's about collecting, analyzing, and interpreting data from a variety of sources. And then you see some of the things that I've been talking about uh, before. So, uh, Data science, we view that as a new profession, and the profession tries to answer four questions. There are four generic questions that you can think of if you talk about data <coughs> science. And if you look at the types of things that we are trying to say with process mining, they closely relate to this. So the first question is, what happens? So if I, for example, we are, for example, analyzing the behavior of students, what courses are students taking, when do they fail, even to the level, do they watch video lectures at a particular point in time, and stuff like that. So first you want to understand what is happening, what is really happening to the student population. Then you recognize things that are undesirable, for example, that you lose half of your students in the first year or something like that, and then you try to understand why did it happen? What is the difference between students that continue and the, stu uh, and the students that, that drop out? So uh, this is when, when you have in your process model a decision, then you try to understand the nature of that decision. 
all just that there is a decision and there is a bottleneck, but why is it there? Often, if we approach these types of questions, we often use a combination of uh, process and data mining together. This is in the past. If you look at the future, we want to predict what will happen. I think the future applications of process mining will have much more of this element in it. You would like to say not that there was a bottleneck last month, you would like to say that there is a bottleneck tomorrow. That, 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 that is incredibly valuable information. And there is nothing that is stopping us from a technological point of view to already do that today. And we can predict things uh, based on historic information and current data. And based on that, we can give recommendations and say what is the best that can happen. So these are four generic questions that you can apply everywhere. The data scientist should be equipped to answer these types of questions. So if you go to a hospital and uh, you're worried about particular things, you can ask yourself questions and they relate to the four, que four generic questions that I had before. Why do patients have to wait so long? Do doctors <coughs> follow the guidelines? Where do they deviate? Can we predict waiting times tomorrow? How much staff is needed for tomorrow? Uh, how can we reduce costs? Uh, the typical questions that the data scientist would like to, to answer. Uh, here you uh, see that you can also look at processes at a completely different level. Uh, we, in the past, we also mined, uh, also under a bit of that, uh, we, we mined uh, the, uh, the logs of these X-ray machines. So you can also look at, uh, this is already the internet uh, of things. Uh, X-ray devices are connected to the internet, and in 10 years, everything will be connected to the internet. So how are these machines really used? Before, Philips didn't know. Now they know that different hospitals in different countries use these devices in a completely different way. Uh, when and why do they malfunction? If it, a system malfunctions, what component should be replaced? Based on the logging, you can predict which part you should replace uh, to predicting that it will break down in the future or that you would like to, uh, uh, to use this in order to improve the devices itself. So, if you, if you want to answer these types of questions, you need to have different skills. Uh, so, it is not just knowledge of computer science or particular types of algorithms. It's a spectrum of things uh, that can be, let's say, all in one person, or it can be in a team where people kind of cover the different disciplines. There are obvious suspects that you, you may expect, like, uh, for example, statistics, data mining, and also process mining for this community, of course, visualization. Uh, there are also things related, if you look at the bottom, of, of having an infrastructure to be able to do that, to also the social and economic aspects of it. As I say, you want, would like to support this entire uh, spectrum. And at this point in time, we are also defining bachelor and master programs that provide a good coverage of all of these areas in, in order to do these things. This looks a bit uh, like a spaghetti model. So you can also group it a bit. And then, in my view, there are three main groups. There is the group in yellow that is related to building the infrastructure to get the events and to do the types of computation you need. Then in red is the core part that is turning data into value. So you have all these analysis techniques ranging from mining to visualization where you have this data and you turn it into results that you can do something with. And then you have the, the social and economic side of it. So, so, so many people today talked about the fact that, okay, you can recognize a problem, but how do you use this information to actually change something in a business situation? That's something very difficult. That's in the green part. Of course, also issues like privacy are important. That's right. I expect that in the future, we will be doing lots of research uh, to protect the privacy of people in all kinds of ways that, that, that one cannot uh, think of now. And so. Uh, you as a patient, you want to know which doctor looked at what your records at what point in time. That's a very natural demand. 
and in the future things like this will will be possible and uh, will be kind of enforced by law. So I just spoke about the disciplines. I'm not going to talk about this a lot, but within the data science center we have these six, uh, uh, sorry, these seven research programs. Uh, the first one is very, of course, very close to the process mining, process analytics, improving service while cutting costs. We also saw uh, several talks referring to the customer journey, typically looking at only two, two bits. And I was just explaining the, the shaving device with all these different contact points that the customer may have with Philips, like how to, how, how to structure this in a, in a better way and how to analyze this and how to improve this. Uh, smart maintenance and diagnostics, so all kinds of devices uh, you can predict when they go to malfunction. This has an incredible value, and you want to exploit that. Four is perhaps interesting uh, for this audience is that we see more and more uh, devices emerging which are close to the human body where people would like to monitor all kinds of things. As a patient being treated at home, to people doing sports that want to monitor things. Uh, and we, we, we have this pro project where we, we measure stress related data. All kinds of things are uh, possible. Uh, five, we are doing that together with the University of Tilburg, where we look more into the, 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 the ethical side of uh, uh, things, privacy and all of these types of things. Two more application oriented uh, fields like smart cities and smart grids. And here you can see that, that it's covering different levels, ranging from cities and infrastructures to systems, people, and, and organizations. Okay, so uh, we, we had several workshops with, uh, with people in industry asking them, okay, if you, uh, do you want to have data scientists in your company? And typically organizations would say, yes, we need them. We need them today. We need very many of them. And like large organizations like Philips, they are that they will be hiring, let's say, up to a hundred people uh, per year, having these types of skills. And it's clear that they are not available today. And so there's a huge demand for people having these skills. So we have workshops asking people, uh, uh, yeah, what kind of skills does one have to, to do these types? Of so uh, they made very nice pictures. And there was this picture that was being made. And that, that's again referring to the fact that, uh, that uh, it is supposed to be a sexy profession. Uh, but I think that this picture is wrong. I think it's, it's talking about the data scientist. And in my view, it should talk about the process scientist. Uh, that it is not just about analyzing data. All of the examples that I did before, they have a process component in it. So the customer journey is a process. People that are having stress-related problems, it's a, it's a process. And so all of these things are processes. And you don't want to improve data storage or something like that. You want to improve the processes or the products behind it. And so it's not about getting more data. Uh, it's about kind of uh, trying to answer questions that really have uh, value for a particular organization that help to improve the, uh, the processes. So uh, Michael Hammer uh, wrote down these uh, seven principles <coughs> of process management. I think many of the people in the room have seen this. Is that clear? Who has seen this before? So, I think one, one third or so. And so if you look at these quotes, of course, he was making these quotes in a time where one could not imagine uh, the things that have happened in the last decade in terms of data uh, and all the developments. But a lot of the things that he was saying uh, are still valid. And so all work is process work. That was what I just referring to. Processes are the main thing. But also, if you look at the bottom three, and I think they are still valid, and they also point to techniques like process mining, even a good process must be performed effectively. And so you can make nice flow charts, but in the end, it has to be done by people. You need to monitor and analyze it in a particular way. Even a good process can be made better, and I like the last one. Every good process eventually becomes a bad process. Saying that you should continuously look at it and analyze the, the, 
different types of behavior. So in this talk, I hope I, I made you enthusiastic, but I think for this audience that is kind of quite trivial, that there is a thing needed that is a process scientist. And it's, of course, broader than just process mining, but you can see in all the things that I've been talking about that process mining is one of the key components. One cannot think of doing these types of things without thinking automatically about uh, process mining. I think it's a profession that uh, is a lot of fun, uh, but as this picture shows, it's also uh, quite challenging. And then you heard about many of the challenges uh, uh, today. In order to support a process scientist, one also needs to have the right tools. And I think process mining is providing the types of uh, tools, the drills that Anna was showing, the kind of drills that are really uh, uh, needed to do these types of things. If you are interested uh, in learning more about the Data Science Center, there's a bit of an advertisement uh, here, uh, and of course uh, companies like Fluxicon are also involved in this, and they are a partner in this, then you can go to this website. We will also start in September a lecture series. And for example, the first lecture that will be given will be focusing on this topic of smart diagnostics. And so how can you monitor events from machines in such a way that you know when they are going to break down or when you need to service them in the most efficient way. Okay, thank you very much. I suggest we... Uh have one or two questions and then we move to the discussion. Yeah, please, go ahead. Uh, yes, well, I would like to ask you what is, in your opinion, the difference between a process scientist and a business analyst? Uh, I think it's very much related, uh, but, but the angle that I've chosen here is to compare it to data science. Yeah, so there, there are lots of hype about data science, not so much in the Netherlands, but if you look in other countries, there are many U.S. universities where the biggest programs that they have they are in data science. So you really see that uh, it is taken off there. So this is to position it with respect to that and, 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 and so, then say so the processes are important. If you talk about, I don't know, the classical, let's say, business analyst or something like that, I think the classical business analyst has to become more nerdy. Uh, uh, to be able to do the things that we are talking about. Yeah, so, uh, so today we have wonderful talks about uh, the things and, and, and many people here in the room are pioneers in things, but there are so many more things possible. You can, you can predict things, you can, there are so many things that you can do, uh, but often people get stuck often because of, of, of not having the ability to very quickly be able to analyze big data, to know what kind of questions to ask, etc. Et so I really think that uh, it is the same as what you can see in the area of auditing. And so is conformance checking different than auditing? You could make the case that it is not the same thing. But the types of technology <coughs> that you can use is, uh, um, yeah, requires a different profile than the classical profile. When I did my uh, study uh, uh, business uh, management, um, we were uh, busy doing uh, simulation yeah. or waiting waiting rows. I don't know if that's the correct term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Waiting lines. Yeah. Waiting lines. <laughs> yeah. um, then we used simulation tools, simulation yeah. programs. Um, what's the difference between the simulation part and using Programs like process mining, like uh, Disco, uh, is there a difference? Is, is there another point of view? So, I think over the many years that I've been working here, perhaps I supervised 50 master students doing a simulation project in some kind of uh, uh, company. Uh, simulation can be very useful to get a better understanding of what is going on. The making of the model is much more important than what comes out of the model. In that way, there is a bit of relationship that if you do this explorative type of process mining, then 
yeah, the process of, of really understanding what is going on is very important and the same is in simulation. However, uh, in all of the simulation projects that we did in practice, we always had to tweak the simulation model to make it mimic reality. And we were looking at the, uh, yeah, we were often cheating in a way to make it understandable. It was not driven by fact. And that, that, and so so my, my, when I was a student, my, 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 my first simulation project was with Duff, and I made a beautiful simulation model of the, the, the parts being changed from here, from Eindhoven to, 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 to Spain. Then we started to do it in reality, and then I realized, oh, Duff has 200 thousand different spare parts. Mm. So how do I put that in the simulation model? And then you start, then the cheating starts. <laughs> Whereas if you do process mining, you don't have to cheat. You can just look at all the data, all the facts, uh, and automatically generate models that are of much higher quality than simulation. What, what do corporate companies like uh, Albert Heijn or, uh, or uh, other great logistic uh, firms uh, I, I think, I don't know, but yeah. I think they, they, they use a lot of, of existing data to, to predict something yeah. about their logistic or process. Of course, there are many areas where, uh, where already today data is used in, in a very smart way. As if you think of a company like Bold.com, uh, that are data-driven companies, but it is showing that the organizations that are data-driven uh, they are winning it from the organizations that are not data-driven. Yeah, so this data-driven is very important. What you typically see is that analytics is now typically focused on very particular points in the process. Mm. Yeah, so for example, on Amazon, what kind of book to, to recommend once you have read this and this and this. Uh, that is very common that these types of techniques are being used. If you look at process mining, it's much less uh, common, because it's more difficult. It's not that I have all of these examples and I have to predict what also an example is that also fits in there. Because of the dynamics of processes, things are much more difficult. So, so processes change while you are looking at them. And they have this, uh, pe people have this strange behavior, if they get more work, they start working faster. Oh, all of these things that are difficult to capture in <laughs> 